When I think of cargo hauling in Star Citizen, the whole series of ships by Masashi Industrial and Starfleet Concern is one of the first things that comes to mind. Originally announced back in April of 2015, the newly concepted MISC ships captured the hearts of space truckers around the verse. With the ability to elongate and transform their smooth round hulls into cargo carrying powerhouses of varying sizes, dollar signs were immediately in the minds of most soon to be industrialists. The hull series was purpose built for long distance point to point travel and getting large payloads on and off the ship as quickly as possible. Their design is also rather unique and functions quite differently when compared to traditional cargo vessels. Each ship in the hull line has the ability to expand and collapse on a proprietary spindle system that exposes a cargo attachment grid that is designed to hold standardized containers of varying sizes. This design not only allows for more cargo capacity overall, but also allows for quicker cargo loading and unloading, which adds up to more profit in the long run. Unlike most haulers which require cargo to be stored inside the ship and removed in a linear fashion, the cargo containers on the hull series can be accessed simultaneously. With the upcoming changes to cargo loading becoming a physical process, the hull series should have an advantage when round trip speed and and loading is taken into consideration. While the spindle design looks like a defensive weak point of the hull series, CIG did state in the original Q&A that the cargo containers would add to the overall defensive value of the ship by being fully shielded in addition to having their own specific armor values. We'll have to see how this pans out as the game progresses, or if the hull series is destined to be an easy loot pinata when preyed upon by the pirates of the verse. The hull series comes in multiple sizes to fit the specific capacity needs of anyone interested in a career of hauling cargo, with larger hull variants being capable of carrying exponentially more cargo and traveling even longer distances. The hull D and E variants are more specialized craft capable of carrying massive amounts of cargo and are flagship vessels targeted towards enterprise operations. The hull E extended is larger than the Idris and even leans towards the Javelin in size. The Hall C is at the middle of the pack and is intended to hit the sweet spot between the smaller single person transports and the massive super freighters. The Hall B is roughly the size of MISC's own Freelancer series, but where the Freelancer is equipped for general utility and other roles, the Hall ships are for pure cargo transport. Not even the Freelancer Max can come close to the Hall B's cargo capacity. The Hall A is a starter ship of the Hall line, coming in at just 22 meters long, 8 meters wide, and 4 meters high. This single-seater hauler is essentially the Star Citizen equivalent of the modern-day tractor-trailer transport. The Hall A has the most speed and maneuverability of the series and is noticeably smaller, but don't let its entry-level size fool you. With the ability to carry 64 SEU of storage on its external grid, the Hall A has the largest cargo capacity of any starter ship in its size class and also comes just shy of its much larger Freelancer sister. Because of its point-to-point -point design, the Hall A also comes equipped with massive fuel tanks with incredible reserves of quantum fuel that rivals much larger cargo ships like the Drake Caterpillar. This allows the ship to travel great distances without the need to constantly refuel and will no doubt give it another advantage when we move to multi-system cargo routes. While the entire Hall line can enter the atmosphere in an unloaded state, the Hall A is still small enough to land planet side and enter hangars while also carrying a full load of cargo. This makes the Hall A an ideal spacecraft for everything from short haul transport runs to ground to orbit ferries and is the perfect platform to start a cargo hauling career. Externally, the Hall A has very familiar lines of other ships from the MISC library with its smooth rounded body and silver plated finish. Starting from the bottom, we notice that at each extreme of the ship, the Hall A is equipped with a four-point landing gear system to help stabilize all sections when landing under heavy loads. At the rear, we find the large main thruster, accompanied by two additional support thrusters underneath it to help propel the ship and its cargo through the verse. These thrusters are countered by some fairly powerful retro thrusters on the front of the ship, which allows for a healthy amount of stopping power when coming in for a landing fully loaded. The front of the ship is unsurprisingly reminiscent of the Freelancer and Prospector hulls and has no offensive weaponry. Tucked under the nose of the ship are two DR-XJ-1 distortion repeaters which are provided purely for defensive purposes. It's difficult to say how effective they would be given the maneuverability of the ship, but they may be able to interfere with the aggressor systems long enough to buy you a brief escape window to scoot away with your precious cargo. The only entrance to the ship is by way of the airlock on the left side which opens for EVA exit in zero gravity and also allows the pilot access via the traditional MISC style drop down ladder. The amount of features and function inside the cab of this space truck is actually quite impressive. Upon entering the ship, we find ourselves in the component room, which also doubles as an EVA airlock. 
This room is sealed off from the rear habitation and front cockpit when the external hatch is opened and allows for centralized repairs on most of the ship's components. We also find one of the lighting control locations for the ship here, which lets the pilot set the mood for those long nights on the road. There are several panels that open up on either side of the room, exposing the main components as well as other avionics and communication packages of the ship. The components in the ship are all size 1 across the board, with a civilian power plant and coolers combined with an industrial grade quantum drive and set of bulwark shields. These last two give the hull A an extreme quantum fuel efficiency and also quite a bit of defensive buffer. If travel time is a concern, the quantum drive can be replaced with a military variant, allowing for much faster travel speeds at the cost of fuel. Within the airlock section, we also find a dedicated EVA suit locker within arm's reach of the exit should any external repairs or inspection be required while in space. There's even an emergency button inside the locker this time around. Heading aft, we come to the living quarters that has all the amenities of home packed into one small but functional room. To our immediate left, we find a sealed weapon rack which can hold rifles and pistols as well as your medical and utility devices. You never know what trouble you may meet on the long lonely road, so it's nice to see CIG add this touch. Directly across we have what looks like a hot beverage dispenser with a small storage locker above it to keep your valuables safe while away from the ship at your local rest stop. Accessing the locker via interaction mode opens the ship's internal storage which allows you to transfer items from your personal inventory. The kitchenette is small but functional with everything required for preparing meals and snacks while out on the open road. There is a food dispenser above the sink as well as an assortment of knives and cutlery and even a small fridge to store your perishables or to keep the space beer cold. There is a single cozy bed with easy access to the room lighting controls and an entertainment system built into the foot. A perfect spot to get some rest during a long trip or even log out of the game to deal with real life deliveries as necessary. The bed also functions as an emergency escape pod, so at least you'll have a TV while you wait for someone to pick you up should anything go wrong on your journeys. Behind the living quarters we find the somewhat cramped restroom of the ship. There is a small towel and soap shelf in the shower area which shares the same space with the stowaway toiletry design we've seen on other ships. Directly across there is a small sink with a vampire revealing mirror and a small functioning medicine cabinet for storing your hygiene supplies. In the cockpit we find a comfortable and welcoming pilot's chair front and center in the room. The view from the chair leans more towards the prospector design rather than the freelancer's visor-esque view, which is a welcome sight literally. The dash is also much shallower on the hull A than previous MISC offerings, allowing for easy access to all the panels and controls, with the most important button being the cargo spool control. In combination with the large amount of windowed space above the pilot, the view feels very spacious and will no doubt be appreciated when landing in tighter spaces. There are even windowed cutouts below the dash to give any space pets a great view too. Overall, I'm really happy with the hull A design and quite surprised how good it is. While I'm not a space trucker at heart, if I were to run cargo as a career in Star Citizen, it would definitely be in one of these hull ships. You can really tell that CIG has put a lot of thought into the design and it feels like no amount of space has been wasted here at all. If you plan on starting out in the verse as a fledgling cargo hauler, I think the Hall A is a no brainer as your first starter ship. If you're interested in other ship reviews, click on the video on the upper right for more Star Citizen content and let me know in the comments below what ships you would like to see reviewed next. Thanks for watching.